Hey guys, welcome to, it is a best of five, by the way. At the end of the last match, I said, okay, it's a best of seven, it is actually best of five. So Rancor is on the verge of a finals berth. Grast looking to cling on and force it to a game five, upper right-hand corner of Rancor starting. Actually, let me do the color swap really fast. Yeah, we're going to do these colors. Upper right-hand corner of Rancor starting as the blue Zerg, bottom left-hand corner we have Grast starting as, this is the first time I think I've seen this color. In all of, Cho like all the casting I've done thus far, Chobo League, Hasu League, whatever. I think this is the first time I've seen this color pink Protoss. So cheers to you, Grast. This is going to be on Eclipse. It is a two-player map. Grast has... And I don't know that Rancor... Here's the thing. Grast has had those two gate openers. I don't know that Rancor is going to fall for it a third time. Right? We've seen the kind of uh, double gate. And we have seen that Rancor, more or less, does have the ability to go ahead and repel these gateway builds. It looks like he is putting a pylon on the high ground. So we'll see. Did Rancor learn from game one to go ahead and check the main and make sure that the, there's two gateways rather than just a single gateway on the low ground as far as the standard Protoss opener? The other disadvantage of putting this pylon on the high ground is oftentimes when you, when you do have the gateway on the low ground, you want that pylon there to create a bit of surface area to blockade a Zerg out of this surface area here. So it becomes more challenging to create that front door seal. So it's a little bit, a little bit risky putting that pylon up there, but you do have that opportunity to do that, do that two gate deception tactic. Rancor opting to go ahead and go over pool again. Probe scout moving out. And so it should be able to see this early spawning pool. So he's in a position to go ahead and repel this two gate build. So he's got the double gateway building. And I think Rancor is just going to allow his Zerglings to do his scouting for him this time. He's moving that drone towards that natural expansion. Actually, is this going to be scouting or is this just going to be for the natural? Looks like it's just going to be for the natural. Yeah, Zergling's going to do the scouting for him. Spawning pool finishing. And this has to... If I was grasped upon seeing this, my heart would drop a little bit. Knowing what has happened in previous matches. Only a sing single Zergling being produced here, though by Rancor after that hatchery, does need to get additional Zerglings produced. Okay, now he's got the full set of three. For a second there, I thought he was like, oh no, he's just going to build a pair and try to play from there. No, Rancor, but no, it looks like he is, in fact, following it up. Just didn't have the minerals. That was what was happening there. The probe, trying to sneak around that back corner, be annoying. Again, kind of hiding in the base. I don't think it's going to, it's not going to have an opportunity to do anything crazy. Eight Zerglings are being fielded this time, and it looks like more Zerglings being produced. So Rancor, Either opting to get aggressive himself, or he's been more in tune with Grasp's penchant for early gateway builds. So eight Zerglings out in the field to deal with the Zealots that are there. And this is a difficult situation where, okay, Extractor's up. Where you need the, the Zealots almost to play defense to make sure you don't end up with runbys at your own base. Things along those lines. Overlord seeing double gateway. Ranker going to go ahead and back off, regroup his Zerglings. And look for an opportunity to swarm around these zealots. This is the problem for Grass in game one as well. Not having his zealots in a cohesive group. And as a result, not getting favorable exchanges. And that looks like it is the case again. Grass trying to... Looks like sacrificing one zealot to save the other. This zealot moving to the north. And he's going to have to regroup and redefend. Now here's the thing. This didn't work out game one as well. But it still turned into a grass win. So even though Rancor has sizable advantages here, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that grass can recap this. But you can see where this pylon on the high ground, rather than being here, and I believe this is a this is a gap here with gateway along that Zerg. I'm not sure with the egg mechanics, but yeah, I think that is a gap. Usually you want the forge here on the left. So the zealot's now there in the defensive gap. Grass going to go ahead and try to grab his national expansion. I like the zealot camping at that one o'clock base in case Rancor was going to move out and go ahead and grab an additional base there. It's going to be two hatch again. So Rancor opting to potentially go two hatch spire and again maybe get an early win. Let's see if Grast is going to be heads up enough to go ahead and have some cannons in his main and maybe get that cybernetics core out in sufficient time. The thing is, is what Grast has wanted to do oftentimes in these matches is to just continue to produce zealots. And go for early aggression to follow that up. Zergling's clearing out that Zelt at the 12 o'clock base. So right now, Grass very much in the dark as to whether Rancor is playing this economically or aggressively. Spire on the way. And this is the Cybernetics who are just warping in. I fear for Grass. 
at this stage of the match. Some Zealots have peeled off. It looks like they're going to try to end around these Zerglings, but there's plenty of Zerglings at home base to engage this otherwise. The one advantage is his Rancor's economy is remaining small in the midst of this. He's grabbing a second Assimilator as all of this is warping in. There is timing where he can go ahead and... Here's the thing. These Zealots are going to be key, absolutely crucial. They can get up in the base and get some... Actually, this probe's going to be crucial. Forgot about this probe. What a hero! Probe is there to go ahead and see that Spire, so Grass knows what he needs to do. Knows that it's two hatch Spire at this stage. Looked back, saw that little bit of pink. That probe was sitting there the entire time. Sacrificed its life for the cause. Zergling's now pulling back. So now Grass knows he needs to get that Stargate up, knows he needs to get cannons in his line immediately and play the match from there. Hydrolosten, as follows a follow-up from Rancor, I think he's actually abandoned, upon, uh, upon seeing that scout, it looks like he's going to abandon the quick Spire Tech surprise and instead opt for, it looks like, moving into three hatch play. I'm sh actually shocked he's deciding to take this third hatch. Considering he has the Zerglings in the map control, I'm shocked he's going for in-base three hatch rather than taking additional expansion. Zerglings are going to provide map control for Rancor. But this also can provide a win of going weapons one. So he wants to seize the air, play... I don't want to call it Bisu build-ish because this, this was nothing close to as far as like a standard Bisu build, but wants to go ahead and have the, Cor the Corsair DT follow-up which I think, again, might lead to a grasp victory, potentially. Especially because Rancor not grabbing additional expansions. <clears throat> he does have double gas. It looks like he's no longer mining additional gas and some zealots. Those two zealots from the bottom right, sneaky, sneaky, able to sneak in, might be able to get some additional kills. Sees the Hydralis den. And this Hydralis accidentally, it looks like, attacking its own larva. Perhaps on a miscued attack move rather than the zealots. So the Zealot's still reigning free. That's the Derpin Hydralis. The Zerglings are going to be able to flood in. So a bit of additional economic disruption for Grass. So Grass sneaking right back in this match. Corsair, upon seeing that Hydralis then floating out, looking for something to go ahead and take out. Citadel of Adun warping down. So Grass has options once again. Funimanis Carapace being upgraded for Rancor. But Rancor still sitting at two bases. Starting to drone up now. Still has a large ground army, and he does have Hydralisks out to deal with these Corsairs. Grasp, oof, donating a lot of health to these with these initial two. But what this is going to do is, is these Corsairs passively... Oh, if he keeps them alive! What they passively do is they force Rancor to play a little bit more defensively rather than going for more aggression. And again, Rancor still has not opted to take an additional base. Some Zerglings making their way... To that bottom right, and again with that, even with Phenomenize Carapace, you get in sufficient Corsairs out, they can take down Overlords very, very rapidly. Additional gateways plopping down, looking for Dark Templar. No, actually, Citadel of Adun being upgraded, no Templar Archives. There's the Templar Archives warping in. Rancor making sure that Grass didn't take a third base. He's going to go finally taking his third base at that 12 o'clock location. The Corsairs finding target Overlords in midfield. So in the mid game, and is he going to pause on the Corsair production? Looks like he's pausing on the Corsair production despite getting weapons one. This feels a little bit like an empty upgrade considering he's not seizing air control. But as far as a follow up, he is going to have Zelt leg speed. He is going to have weapons one and he's going to have a, all sorts of gateways to flood units out here in the mid game. So the match resetting a little bit. Both players a little bit ec economically thin. I think it's still anybody's match. Single Hydralisk, it looks like it moved up and got wiped out. And with these cannons, that is going to open up these zealots to potentially press forward to be aggressive. This is a sizable enough attack force, though, from Rancor that I believe it will smash anything that is produced here. Big switch from match one that happened previously is that Rancor doesn't have the evolution chamber advantage, evolution chamber upgrade advantage comparatively. He's only got the single evolution chamber is just now working on level one spine attack. Spines? Yeah, spine attack. Missile attack, effectively. The Corsairs are sneaking through. It looks like they're going to go ahead, at least push an Overlord out of this 12 o'clock base before there's any Corsair to go ahead and defend that. Theoretically, provides a bit of a threat of Dark Templar there. However, this Overlord is nearby that natural of grass. Still going to slow Rancor's economy down. 
So getting some value out of it, never, nevertheless. Some High Templar now out there. Psy Storm just about finished. I like that he built the High Templar before the Psy Storm at this stage to go ahead and get that energy out. All sorts of gateways. I And there's that Dark... Oh, let's see if these Dark Templar... Great timing on Rancor. To find, oh, the Dark Templar trying to split. One of them sneaks out. And he's going to end up in open field. So those Corsairs might be able to sneak back around. But it looks like there's a Spore Colony there. And a Creep Colony waiting to be upgraded. There's also all sorts of Overlord Spore Colonies. So Rancor is not fooling around. He's like, Dark Templar are not going to get anything accomplished anywhere in my bases. Thank you very much. And I'm going to make sure your Corsairs can't really do anything. And I'm wondering if that is a result of spotting that level 1 weapons upgrade. So Rancor showing up. He's going to push more towards uh, defensive economy. But in about... Two minutes. Grass is going to be fielding, if he keeps up with his macro, is going to be fielding a gigantic army. And looking to smash something out on the field. Or maybe a little bit earlier. I thought he was going to wait for upgrades to finish. But he's starting to filter out with a lot of these Dragoons and Zealots. It is possible he'll move up to this 9 o'clock. I wish he waited a little while. He does have some Psy Storm here. At the moment, he can just flat out outproduce Rancor. Rancor does have a sizable standing army midfield. He's looking to attack once his level 1 weapons finish. And is that High Templar going to... High Templar picked off before that Psy Storm finished. One probe sneaking out. Another size, good Psy Storm bait. And this is exactly what Rancor wants to do is go ahead and bait that Psy Storm out before Grast is ready to move out. Pick off High Templar otherwise. Psy Storm is huge mid-game. It's what provides map control and any opportunities for aggression. Another High Templar getting picked off. Hero Hydralisks in the mid-game. But now Grass starting to press forward as level 2 weapons just about to come online. Snuck a probe bottom right to maybe go ahead and establish that base. The Zerglings trying to delay this so Rancor can build some additional attack forces to repel this. But this is a big, big army with a lot of upgrades moving forward. This is a nice Sim City. I don't know that it's enough to repel. Some good size storm. The Zealots dodging out of it. It looks like a Dragoon eating a little bit of it, but Mostly catching a lot of the Hydralisks. The High Templar needs to be careful. Beautiful Psystorm. Storm. While well, those Hydralisks got caught with their, their spy. What, what is the equivalent of Zerg pants? With their scales down? Scales down. Burrowing. Grass hunting this army down is going to catch maybe another Overlord. He should be able to establish this base without any trouble. And is running in. I like what Rancor is doing. He's drawing these forces to the upper left. To try to buy himself some time to get some defenses around that 12 o'clock location and his natural expansion. And has successfully done so. Looks like those Hydras are going to try to peel. They might be able to even pick off some reinforcements. So Rancor splitting that army, drawing it back. Sitting, uh, still doesn't have Lurker upgrade. But here's the thing. This is a very Systormable storm area. Need to come up with a better word for that. It is a lightning bait. So a lot of these units just have to watch as the Zealots kind of engage on this. And yeah, look at that. Look at that size storm. Some Hylos trying to engage from behind, but there are Dragoons able to press the rest of that. And so Grast might be able to end the game right here. Hydralis trying to do something from behind, but looks like they're getting cleaned up by those Dragoons and those Zealots. And Archons and Zealots... And Dragoons, oh my, still standing and peeling into this natural expansion. Rancor did not buy himself enough time. The upgrade's also playing a big role here. And there's GG. We are going to a game five. Well played by Rancor. Exactly, 14-minute match. Great adjustment. Hero Probe in the early portions of the match to see that Spire. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So game five to determine who we're going to see in the Chobo League Finals. Thanks for listening.